Hey guys, Miss Miklos here, and in this lecture, we are talking about solving right triangles. So we're going to apply what we learned in our last lecture with using the calculator, and we're actually going to solve for everything in the triangle, both angles and sides. So the first thing that I want to talk about when we deal with the triangle um, and when we're labeling everything, we always use lowercase letters to represent sides and capital letters to represent angles. So I'm going to go ahead and start with calling angle C our right angle. Okay, so that would be side C. The other two don't really matter, but it is important that we always put whichever side is opposite the angle, we label them the same exact letter. Okay, so here's angle B and there is side B. So this is just helpful for us because it's an easy way for me to know what sides are opposite what angles. The big thing is we always use C for our right angle, so side C is always our hypotenuse. So here's number one. It's asking us to find all the missing sides and angles. So the very first thing that I'm going to go ahead and do is sketch out a picture. And this is just going to help me when I'm determining which trig functions to use. So I know this is angle C, it's 90 degrees. Angle A, I'm going to write angle A is up here, so that's 41.5, so this means that is side A, side B, angle B, mm -hmm. and I know that the hypotenuse is 16.3. Now, some important side notes for us to know. The first is the triangle sum theorem, and you guys learned this in geometry, and that means that the sum of all angles is 180 degrees. So that makes life really easy for me because as soon as I know two angles, we can quickly determine what the measure of the third angle would be. The other thing that I want to point out is that there are a lot of correct ways to get our answers today. And my advice is whenever possible, use the given information. Um, the reason why I like to do this is because then, um, let's say I mess up on something really small, that incorrect answer does not have a negative effect on the rest of my answer choices. So with that in mind, um, we're going to start by actually finding angle B because we know that all the angles add up to be 180, so I'm going to subtract the sum of the other two angles. So all of a sudden, I get angle B is 48.5 degrees. Now, if I wanted to, I could go off of side B if I, if I cared to do so, um, but I'm gonna use angle A here, and I should probably write an A just so we see that. Um, just because that was the given information. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I do dumb subtraction stuff. And what if I wrote 49.5 or 47.5 or something stupid um, instead of what the actual answer is? So I prefer to rely on the information given to me. So the way that we're going to go about doing this is I'm going to look and see which angle are we using, and I'm going to use 41.5 degrees. Then, I need to make a ratio of two sides. And it looks like, um, let's find side A first. Okay, I do not know side A. I know side C is 16.3. So I'm going to write A over 16.3. And if I think about this, I know A is the opposite side. And 16.3, my point didn't really show up, there we go, is the hypotenuse. So I need to think to myself, which trig function is opposite over hypotenuse, and I know that that is sine. So I'm gonna go ahead and write sine of 45, I'm sorry, sine of 41.5 degrees equals A over 16.3. Okay, and once again, this is not the only trig function we could use. Um, we could have found the adjacent side first, and that would have changed our trig function, or if I would used angle B, which as I said, I personally wouldn't use. But if I used angle B and tried to find side A, I'd be using the cosine ratio because it would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I need to isolate A. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 16.3.
and I get 16.3 times the sine of 41.5 degrees is equal to A. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my calculator, make sure our calculator is in degree mode, and then I get 10.8. Um, kind of a hint to you guys, I always put this side as the coefficient to our trig function. That way, I don't really need to worry about closing the parentheses. So all we have left to find is the third side, and I'm writing this down here. And we really have two options. Our first option is we could use Pythagorean theorem. Now, I'm actually not going to use that method, but if I'm confident that this side is correct, and this side was given to me, um, then I would get the correct answer. I am actually, though, going to use our second method, which is to use trig. And um, I'm going to go ahead and use that method just because I think that it is good practice for us. So I'm going to erase some of my info here and um, go ahead and do that problem. Okay, so this time um, I'm going to go ahead and find side B. And in relationship to angle A, I know that side B is my adjacent side. And I'm going to use my hypotenuse again because that is given information. So this time, I'm going to do the cosine of 41.5 degrees equals B over 16.3. Because B is my adjacent side and 16.3 is my hypotenuse. So once again, what we're seeing here is that technically we could use any of our six trigonometric ratios that we want. I just need to make sure that whatever trig ratio I use here, we have those appropriate sides um, set equal to our function. So now I'm going to multiply by 16.3. and I get 16.3 times the cosine of 41.5 degrees is B. And when I put that into my calculator, I get 12.2 is equal to side B. Okay, I've said this already, but I just want to stress the method I use is not the only thing we could do. There are a lot of different options that will give us correct answers. So here's problem number two, and on problem number two, this time, I don't know side C. Okay, I'm going to call it A up there. I know side A is 8.1, and I know side B is 12.2. So I'm actually going to start here by using the Pythagorean theorem to find our missing side. And the reason why I would do this this time is because both of these values were given information. So I know that they are correct. So I get 214.45 equals C squared. And when I square root that, I get 14.6 is equal to side C. I know that's a reasonable answer because our hypotenuse should always be the biggest side, and it is. So from there, we need to determine which angle do I want to find first. And I like A, so I'm going to find A first here. So I'm going to say A equals, and I'm going to use our tan function. And the reason why I'm choosing to use tan is because opposite and adjacent were our given information. So I'm going to do the opposite side over the adjacent side. So we need to remember in our calculator, whenever I'm trying to find an angle, I need to use tan inverse. So I'm going to do tan inverse, and I can actually type in this ratio into my calculator of 8.1 over 12.2. And when I go ahead and put that in, I get that angle A is 33.6 degrees. Now at this point, you guys might be thinking, okay, we're gonna do the same thing now for angle B, and I have good news for you. When we know two angles, we are just gonna use the triangle sum theorem, because I know that the sum of all three of my angles needs to be 180 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and say that 33.6 degrees plus angle B plus 90 degrees equals 180. And what some of you guys may figure out is that whenever I have a right triangle, my two acute angles have to have a sum of 90 as well because this is already 90 degrees. So when I'm doing this, I get 100 
and 23.6 degrees plus B is 180. So angle B is 56.4 degrees. Okay, so whenever you guys are finding an entire triangle, make sure that all three angles add up to be 180. Example number three, um, angle B is 20 degrees, angle C is 90 degrees, and side C is 30. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and draw out my right triangle. I know this is C, so this is 30. I'm making this angle A again, but I wanna keep in mind that it honestly does not really matter which angles A and B as long as, here we go, I know you've been waiting for it. Boom, okay, as long as we label the side opposite from B, side B, and as long as we label the side opposite from A, side A. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do on this problem is that I notice that we know two of the angles, so I'm going to go ahead and use the triangle sum theorem to find the third angle. So I'm doing A equals 180 minus 20 plus 90, and I get that angle A is equal to 70 degrees. And the thing that I wanna point out here is that I know back in geometry that the biggest angle is always opposite from the biggest side. So this should give us a clue that side A should be a lot bigger than side B is based on what their angles are. And while that doesn't necessarily help me find the correct answer, it just gives us something to double check our answers from. And I don't know why I just highlighted A. Anyways, um, so, Based on the given information, I am actually going to find things off of angle B. Okay, and the reason why I'm doing this is because that is the given angle. So I'm going to say 20 degrees equals A over 30. And in relationship to angle B, that is adjacent over hypotenuse, so I'm doing cosine. So when I do 30 times the cosine of 20 degrees equals A, I get... 28, ooh, there we go, 28.2 is equal to A. Okay, so now I have some options. I could use Pythagorean theorem, or I could go ahead and use trig, and I think trig is awesome and amazing, so of course that's what I'm gonna choose to do. But I wanna stress that if you wanna use um, Pythagorean theorem, Whenever I know two sides of a right triangle, that is perfectly fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and find side B this time. So I'm gonna do sine of 20 degrees equals B, because that's the opposite, over 30. And this would be 30 times the sine of 20 is equal to B. And when I put that into my calculator, I end up getting 10.3 is equal to side B. And I just want to stress this is ugly, ugly writing. It is 28.2 is A. And these answers would make sense because if I look at them, obviously our hypotenuse is the biggest, 28.2 is the second biggest, and then I have 10.3, um, which is the smallest, and that is opposite from the smallest angle, so I know that I'm in good shape. Okay, so that was our last real example, um, and what we'll see is it is really repetitive from there, but I wanna go through a few things that really didn't come up, and we might see it in our next lesson. So the first, I just wanna look at this ratio, sine of 35 equals 10 over C. Okay, most of the problems that we dealt with today were nice because our variable was in our numerator. Here, since it's in the denominator, what I would need to do is I would need to multiply both sides by C to begin with, and I would get C times the sine of 35 equals 10. So C is equal to 10 
times the sine of 35 degrees. And right now I really could care less what that value is. But the whole point here is when I have my variable in my denominator, this is how I would need to go about isolating that variable. You guys may remember that sine and cosecant are reciprocals of one another. So we could also have done cosecant of 35 equals C over 10. Okay, and we would end up really putting the same thing into my calculator. I personally normally avoid using cosecant, secant, and cotangent, and I stick to sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, but either way, we get the same answer. So it really depends on what you feel more confident in, um, if you feel really confident in using those reciprocal ones in our calculator, or if you would prefer um, to solve an equation and do a little bit more work there. Final thing I want to talk about is a little bit of a preview to some brand new terms that we are going to see next lesson. And the first is this phrase, angle of elevation. And what the angle of elevation is, is it is the angle that is formed with the ground or the horizontal and the hypotenuse. Okay, so this is actually something we see in a lot of word problems where it'll ask us find the angle of elevation to the top of the building or find the angle of elevation to the sun. Okay, so when we hear that term angle of elevation, it is the angle that is measured from the horizontal up to the highest point. The other term that we are going to see is the angle of depression. And I know most of you guys are thinking, oh, that's easy, it must be up here. But it actually isn't. Okay, the angle of depression is a completely different triangle. And when I draw this triangle with an angle of depression, I go out and down. So it is a completely different type of triangle. Okay, it's the same in the fact that it's still a right triangle, but the way that I draw it is quite different. And this angle right here, then we would call the angle of depression. And I always remember depression, you're kind of, you're down and out. Okay, so we're going out and we're going down to draw that triangle. So this is just a quick preview um, for what we're going to be doing next class. And hopefully you guys are feeling confident in solving right triangles. And please let me know if you guys need any extra assistance.